Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some pretty amazing stuff. First up, Google moves into Venmo and bank territory with checking accounts and updated payment app. Why is this such a big deal? Because it's something that we talked about just two days ago, where Facebook and Google soon to enable Bitcoin buying also. I've got my man Alex Mashinsky from Celsius come on the show today around 2.30 p.m. Central Time, and here's the questions that I have. So we're gonna talk about these first, and you can take a vote, and also let me know some questions you have for the machine. In some good Chainlink news, Matic becomes the first outside Ethereum to launch native Chainlink feeds. And this is just more good news on top of more good news, because Chainlink could be a top three crypto. And finally, we're gonna play devil's advocate. There was a tweet I sent out, which was a quote from Ian Bellina from Token Metrics, where he believes that Bitcoin could go down to 14,000 in December. We'll take a look at that and a lot of other things, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So it's November 19th, 9 a.m. Texas time. I'm trying to get some things done for uh, this channel and my other businesses, so let's get into it. So first up, hey, Bitcoin's above uh, 18K. Again, that's pretty good news. It's up almost 1%, but again, 15% for the week. I think uh, that's been talked to death, so let's just keep going. Ethereum, 478. Gosh, I wish it could just hit that $500 mark. I think that's like a psychological barrier and a line of support. So if we can just hit 500, I think we're off to the races and uh, we'll see how that all works as far as the Ethereum 2.0 launch. If you haven't heard, uh, they're trying to get as much Ethereum uh, staked as possible. Right now, they're around 20, 25% of what they need. So it looks like that Ethereum 2.0 uh, phase zero phase uh, could be delayed until January 1st or 15th, but we'll see. Uh, XRP, hey, it's almost at 30 cents, uh, 29.9. So it's up 3% or 16% for the seven day average. So if you're holding on to XRP and you bought it at uh, a quarter, well, congratulations, looking good. Chainlink, uh, number five spot, almost at $14. This is looking pretty good for Chainlink. I gotta be honest. So I think it's all time high was around 18. Right now we're almost at 14. So uh, pretty good uh, week for Chainlink up 7%. But really, the big story is Litecoin. Litecoin is on a tear. There is nothing new about it that I know of. Let me know in the comments section. But uh, again, it's at 35%, up 12% for the week. I do believe it has something to do with people who are in PayPal and take a look at it and go, wow, I don't know uh, what uh, Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash really is. And Ethereum, I guess, but they're pretty expensive. But this Litecoin is only 80 bucks. I want to buy that. I think that's part of it. There's probably something else I don't know because I don't know everything. So let me know. Uh, Bitcoin Cash up 1.5. And if you get a chance after this, we did a, uh, a Bitcoin.com exchange uh, quick live stream. Actually, it was a video premiere. It was me, Alex Maschioli, and uh, Danish, uh, head of uh, the Bitcoin.com exchange. And it was really good, really fun times. We got to talk about the Bitcoin bull run, why we think it's sustainable, but also we got a real peek behind the curtain uh, because Danish is in charge of uh, the whole exchange right there. So he's telling us a lot of great information and it was uh, it was a fun time. So when you get a chance, uh, check that out. I'll link it at the very end. And in there, I actually talk about why I really should invest into some Bitcoin cash. So let's see, Polkadot, man, Polkadot's almost at $5. I'd like to see that. Six and a half for the week. Pretty good. Finance coins up, Cardano, I mean, everybody's up. Cardano seems like, this is a question somebody sent me, like, why is the Card Cardano doesn't do too much when, while everything else is pumping? We have to remember right now that uh, Bitcoin always pumps first. It seems like that's pretty much how it is in, in, a, in a bull run. But then it starts to kind of float down to the altcoins as people start to go, hmm, I like Bitcoin, but what else is behind it? What's the next Bitcoin? So uh, as far as Cardano, really not much of a thing. It's always around 10 cents, always. So um, hopefully it can uh, find its legs. EOS 3.1, 2.7, anything great. Wow, 12% for OKB. I think there was a, a new listing for OKB. That's why, so great for that, I guess. Uh, Huobi token, 12%, sure. You're in finance again, uh, playing the game, 22%, 65% for the week. I will not touch that. 5% for uni, that's pretty good. 10% for synthetics and on and on we go. So it uh, looks like the market is doing pretty good. Again, I believe Pigcoin will pump first and then it'll flow down to the altcoins, but only time will tell. All right, let's break in the top story. So first up, this is fascinating and it has huge ramifications. So Google moves into Venmo and bank territory with checking accounts with their updated payment app. And this was a story that we had just covered just like three or four days ago, where it was Facebook and Google soon to enable Bitcoin buying. It always surprises me when we have these stories early where people are like, eh, it's just a rumor. And then we see other types of information that gets put out where it's like, oh yeah, it actually could be. So uh, I'll try to link this in the end as well, uh, where we talk about our Facebook and Google gearing up 
to offer Bitcoin and crypto, but I'm gonna tell you why it's almost a lock why they're gonna do this, and I'll explain that in a little bit. So the tech giant is relaunching the payment app to allow people to pay friends, similar to PayPal's popular Venmo and Square's Cash App. So look, PayPal's already in the game and PayPal owns Venmo. So if PayPal and Venmo are in the game and then Square's already in the game as far as like cryptocurrency, uh, why wouldn't uh, Google and perhaps even Facebook get into it? It only makes sense, right? So first of all, to back up, when it talks here about there's a partnership with Citibank, we just covered a story just a couple days ago where Citibank exec says Bitcoin will trade at 318,000 by M2021. So you know that the people that they're partnering with already have a huge belief into Bitcoin and crypto assets. So why wouldn't they do it? On top of that, when we talk about Square, look, Square made a ton of money off of offering Bitcoin to their users. And it actually drove half, half of Square's cash app revenue in the first quarter. Let me say that again. It drove half of the revenue in the fourth quarter. This was written on February 26, 2020. So when PayPal was going to get in the game, I was like, why wouldn't they do it? Why wouldn't they be a part of that? Because if they can just add Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And look, they went above and beyond Square. They said, look, we're not going to do Bitcoin. We're going to do Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. So beat that, suckers. So when you take a look at what's going on, it really comes down to why wouldn't they do it? All right, off my soapbox. So here we go. The tech giant will let users open bank accounts, pay friends, and manage budgets through a new version of its Google Pay app rolling out Wednesday. See, the, now this is in contrast with what it talks about here. So it says, rolling out Wednesday, unless there's an update, I do not think they're going to start to do bank accounts uh, just by this week, because today's Thursday, so I don't know where this is actually coming from. And this article is, well, it was yesterday, Wednesday, November 18th. So I don't think that actually happens because right here it says beginning next year. So I don't understand, unless you're just talking about the app itself being updated, so whatever. On top of the uh, uh, Citibank and Stanford Federal Credit Union, uh, Google said it plans to add 11 new partner institutions next year. And this is perfect for banks. Like we talked about, banks have to catch up. They're not innovators. And if they don't catch up, they're going to get blockbustered. They're going to look down the street and be like, wow, what happened to us? We were so huge and everybody came to us. And now we're just lonely on the side of the street and nobody cares about the banks. So unless they actually innovate and do something, they're going to uh, fall the way the, the wayside. It's going to be like a typewriter. Who uses a typewriter these days? Anyhow, Google Pay will also let users send peer-to-peer -peer payments, a feature that made PayPal's Venmo and Square's cash app household names as people shift to digital payments. And without even saying it, they're saying it. So moving down, Google said it's Plex checking and savings accounts have, check this out, no monthly fees, no overdraft charges, or minimum balance requirements. That sounds pretty good. Users can also request a physical debit card, which will run on MasterCard's network, which I thought was pretty interesting because a lot of things run on Visa and they're like, no, nah, we're going to use MasterCard's network, which is fine. Transactions per second, probably around a, a thousand or more, just like Visa. So I can see that happening, but I'm not a big traditional market guy. But if I was if I was one of those people, I would probably want to invest in MasterCard today because it looks like it's probably going to go up. Not financial advice, just uh, what I'm what I see. But of course, as excited as I am, there are some downsides, and I'm sure you can guess what those are, and it's privacy. Look, uh, Google knows a lot about you already. Uh, when I did and used AdWords, I still use AdWords for my other businesses, but uh, Google AdWords, I'd also uh, advertise on Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Twitter ads, not so much, but uh, Facebook and Google, they know everything about you. Like, I can advertise to a 45-year-old mother of three with an income of 35,000 to 55,000 who lives in a rural side of Ohio and I can pinpoint that subset of group. It can be that granular. And that's just the basics. Now, what if they, I don't know, uh, got that information and started to sell it to advertisers because that's their main business model and say, hey, how would you like to talk to somebody who uh, likes to buy X, Y, and Z? Maybe you could put an ad on there or maybe you could track them uh, through the internet. That's, I'm saying it's easily done. And they're going to talk about in a little bit about how we're not going to sell your data. <laughs> sure, just like Facebook never sold your data. Anyhow, users can link Google Photos to search receipts and link Gmail to see bills and subscriptions for money management. It shows spending summaries and trends over time. Users also get rewards and offers based on their transaction information. Interesting, interesting. So to finish this up, Google said it will use certain data on the payments product, which it said is required by most 
mobile payment providers. For example, Google uses personal information to set up and maintain Google Pay account. Certain information is also required by regulators to protect against fraud and money laundering. Sure. And Google Pay will never, ever sell your data to third parties or share your transaction history with the rest of Google for targeting ads. Of course they won't. Of course they won't. Well, we're not going to sell it per se, but we're going to package it in a certain way that just gives us these advertisers for groups. So it's not like your personal data. It's a subset of data, which we just link together and they can advertise to. So don't be fooled, folks. So anyhow, there's two sides of this story, right? The first side is if this does happen, which I think it's going to happen, uh, 2021 is the year. I've said that all the time. I'll say it again. 2021 is a year. And when Google comes out and says, you know what? Hey, guess what? Uh, instead of just PayPal's paltry for crypto, we're going to offer the top 10. And uh, off you go. So the real question is, which ones are, are, are it's going to be? We know it's going to be Bitcoin, Ethereum, probably Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin. So that's a pretty good bet. On top of that, I don't know what it could be. I think it's going to happen, but I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on. Next up, I'm going to have Alex on the show today around 2.30. He's supposed to call in, and uh, we'll do a recorded session. But here's the questions that I have. And these are just the things that I kind of gleaned from the questions that I have in my head and doing a little research. And I don't know what they are, and I'm waiting for Alex to answer, so we'll go for this. And what I have so far is, how is yield created with Celsius? How is a Celsius token created, and how does it hold value? Does Celsius ever invest in perpetual swaps and futures? And nobody's interested in that. Is the rehypothecation in the terms and condition for Celsius for the lenders or also for the borrower's collateral? Because it's really not clear in the terms and conditions and then any kind of other type of thing. And then people have uh, already talked about it. But I just put this out uh, five minutes ago before I started the video. And uh, I'd like you to vote. I'd like you to tell me what you think you'd like to ask. There's another thing I know people talk about. What about the flare drop? It's it's already in the works and it's already probably going to happen. So I'm not going to answer him asking that. Now, honestly, I don't know particularly why he wants to come on the show again. I think it's probably something I said. Uh, that's just how it goes. As the channel gets bigger, I have more responsibility and I need to uh, make sure that the things that I say are 100% correct. So this should be a good interview. Let me just think in the comment section. Let's move on. Next up, Matic becomes the first outside Ethereum to launch native chain link feeds. And first, your question might be, what the heck is Matic? So Matic is actually not even in the top 100. It's actually now 113. And it is, it is a it is a second and first layer solution for Ethereum. So hopefully it uh, will increase the, the throughput or transactions per second. And it uses a couple different uh, methods. One of those is proof of uh, stake. Also, the other one is proof uh, or actually plasma, excuse me. So uh, Matic could be a very big thing. It could help, uh, you know, Ethereum kind of reach its goals. Uh, I don't know. But I thought it was interesting that Matic, on top of a lot of big players, here, let me just scroll down real quick, uh, are really getting into um, Chainlink. So Chainlink's being used by Aave, Synthetics, Yearn, Celsius. It says Google, but that's kind of dubious. I'll just be honest with you. It's like it was a blog post by some developer at Google, but whatever. Ample Fourth Arbol and Nexus Mutual. So uh, these are just some of the big names that are using Chainlink, that are publicly using Chainlink, and uh, I think it's one of those great projects. Now, people always tell me, like, well, Chainlink's old, and it's a scam, and there's this thing from, what is that, uh, Zeus? Zeus Network or whatever. They're, they're always doing promoted uh, ads about how crappy Chainlink is, which I think is odd that you have to do a promoted post on Twitter to, to prove that something's crappy. I, I, don't, I don't understand that, but whatever. So this was an interesting article to me, and I thought, well, I'll just go over that real quick. So what's happening? Matic Network, a smart contract platform, acting as both a layer one and layer two for Ethereum, announced on Thursday the full launch of five Chainlink price feeds that are set to power its ecosystem. So if you're not familiar with Chainlink, it really just pulls in uh, outside data into the blockchain because blockchain sucks. They can't do that. It's just not that. That's not what it's designed for. So it has to pull out outside data. Now, what's great about Chainlink is that you can use multiple points instead of having one point to pull in a, a price feed or a temperature or a whatever contract because it just can't. Uh, if you just have one price point, that's one point of failure, which someone can hack and really screw up everything. So with Chainlink, you can use as many as you want to, many different price points and aggregate get the information to get the right uh, uh, right correct info so Matic's got five Matic now features five price feeds Matic USD USDC USD Ethereum USDT and all that stuff die 
which is great, right? The more the better. Chainlink's verifiable randomness function is set to be integrated soon as well, which would allow Matic app developers to build provably fair chance games or other integrations. I think this is the big thing that people leave out, which is all the development that is potentially going on at Chainlink. It's not like they just wrote two lines of code. Someone told me that they, they wrote two lines of code and that's it. That's all they've ever done. They made billions of dollars. I'm like, I don't know if that's really how it works. So when I hear about these things, about things that are going on behind the scenes, it makes me even more bullish. Do I understand it 100%? No. That's why I haven't uh, sold my house and put it on the chain link. I'm just hedging my bet. So moving down, Sandeep Nailwell, co-founder of Matic Network, told Cointelegraph that Matic's hybrid approach is already generating interest despite many being critical of Plasma as a solution for smart contract scaling. I remember when Plasma was like the next big thing and then nobody used it. Now all of a sudden Matic came back and said, yeah, we're using it. The viability of Plasma for DeFi is a hotly debated topic, but there is no other Plasma implementation in production apart from Matic. And turns out that in production, it works fine and has not encountered any issues after four months of launch of mainnet. So that's pretty good to launch a mainnet. It's really great to have it at four months, but you know what's even better? have it four years, 10 years, 13 years. So as time goes on uh, and there's no flubs and no errors, which would be pretty uh, ridiculous to think about, no major errors, then I think this project will do quite well. Uh, he argued that the flexibility of Matic, letting developers choose between Plasma and proof of stake can entice different types of developers. Many apps like games, VR space, and pure POS, while some DeFi and prediction markets choose Plasma, he added. Matic supports Ethereum tooling and allows developers to simply pick up their Ethereum smart contracts and deploy it on Matic sidechains within a matter of minutes. Now, well said. And there was one thing that uh, I did an interview with Richard Hart, and he talked about how, how great Ethereum was. Uh, I mean, he talked about how Hex was murdering uh, Ethereum and Ethereum was murdering uh, Bitcoin. But one thing he did say, which is interesting, he says, you know, Ethereum is great because it's like a plug and play option. You can, it's like a, you can write your story and Ethereum is the typewriter. And it's really a lot easier to start with a template. And he says, if you've ever you know, built a website, it's much easier to start from a template than from scratch. And that's very true. So if Matic is, uh, is offering that type of thing to developers, so much the better. And again, if they're integrating Chainlink and that works out, great, because I own Chainlink. I don't own Matic, uh, maybe later, but uh, this is a good article, I think. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to Ian's prediction. So next up, this is just devil's advocate. Um, I really don't like all the different, uh, you know, rah, rah, and it's going to go to the moon and Bitcoin's the best and, uh, you know, crypto is uh, never going to go down. I just think it's ridiculous because it will. It will. Um, I don't want to be a wet blanket, but I got to be a voice of reason because uh, things went crazy last time. So this was a good quote from Ian Bellina. If you don't know Ian Bellina, I've had him on the show. I like Ian. He did a great video with us, uh, which is actually in my my website over at danteacherscrypto.com, which is 100% free, simplify everything, come on over, uh, sign up, uh, no problems. And uh, he is on module four reviews. And he did a great video with us called how to do your own research because people always ask, they always say the same thing. Did you do your own research? Do your own research? People are like, what the hell does that mean? So uh, Ian came on and he explained to us how he did his research back in the crazy ICO days. And then he actually answered the question, which I give him uh, serious props for. But coming on, I said, hey, Ian, a lot of people say you're a shill. What do you say about that? And he answered that question. It was great. And he, he admitted some mistakes, which, you know, who's perfect? I ask you, who is perfect? Nobody. And he pretty much just said, hey, you know, I learned some things and um, he goes, I never, you know, he talks about he doesn't really shill shill, but he did get uh, played by a couple of uh, different projects. And he said, now we realize what to look out for. And um, I can respect that. So I am never in the belief that when someone makes a mistake that they are crucified for the rest of their lives. I just, I believe in forgiveness and that's, that's all I'm going to say. But uh, Ian had a great quote. He says, and this is from uh, an article by Billy Bambra from Forbes. And he says, Bitcoin is performing better than expected, while still bullish long term due to macroeconomic factors and large corporations getting into crypto. We expect Bitcoin could correct back to around 14,000 by the first week of December. And this is Ian Blina, CEO of Token Metrics. So, look, you never know. I mean, we have nothing but great news, right? We've got uh, the PayPal's coming out, the micro strategies, the Paul Tudor Jones, all the big players are coming out and saying, we love Bitcoin, everything, Kumbaya is great. However, you never know in this space. Uh, it looks very promising, but are things sustainable? Only time will tell. And it's just one of those things, it's just a cautionary tale, right? 
if you think it's going to go to the moon and nothing's going to go wrong, uh, usually that's when you should really take a step back and go, wait, is this the best that there is? I know some, I always talk about don't FOMO and people are like, well, how can you say don't FOMO? I'm saying don't, don't sell your kidney to go pay for Bitcoin and dump all your money into it, okay? What I'm saying is, you can, like I still dollar cost average in. Like today, I'm gonna be buying another 100 bucks worth of Bitcoin. Is the price a little bit higher? Yeah, but you know what? I didn't uh, sell the farm and uh, you know buy everything uh, right now or, or, or beforehand. So is there gonna be dips? Yes, and that's why I'm saying, there's gonna be dips, they're gonna come, it's just a natural progression, so just do it like that. One person had a really good advice. They said, hey, if you really got an itch to really FOMO, then uh, increase your dollar cost average position. Like if you spend 100 bucks a day or, or a week or whatever it is that you do, put in 125 today if you really wanna go all in uh, and then just play it safe. Now, that's just my advice uh, or just what I'm gonna do. I'm not telling you what to do. So if you wanna bet the farm, go right ahead. I mean, heck, it might work out for you, I don't know. But uh, it all depends. So, so that's all I got for today. So I will link those uh, two videos at the very end, the ones that we talked about in the beginning. And also, if you want to sign up for Dan Teaches Crypto, it's just danteacherscrypto.com. There's a link in the description if you want to use that. Again, it's 100% free. Always will be free. And uh, I try to simplify everything so you can understand things. The only thing I ask that you do is just tell a couple, two of your friends, two people, friends, family, loved ones about the website so they can learn about crypto. Because I think 2021 is going to be a huge year. And I, I need I need people to be educated and understand exactly what's going on. So one, they don't fall into the wrong uh, scams. And two, they know exactly what they're investing into. So people don't say, why are you investing in that? That's that, that's just air and doesn't make any sense. They have a response to it. And they can also be evangelists because if there's more people in this space, everybody wins. So that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one.